Hello and welcome. Today we're making a tilde card. Um, I think this is a little, uh, is a funny one. I love cards that make people laugh. So it says, a good man can make you feel sexy, strong, and ready to take on the world. And then on the inside it says, oh wait, it says, oh sorry, wine does that. So I thought that's just kind of a fun little surprise, you know, funny little thing to send in the mail. It does feature a tilde stamp. I know some people love her, some people hate her. I happen to be in the love category. I fell in love with these stamps about 10 years ago. It's a small Swedish company that, that makes them. So today I'm going to show you how I colored her up and how I created the element of her leg hanging off the card. So I have it all stamped out onto some Copic Safe cardstock. Notice that it isn't trimmed right here. I'll show you how to do that at, at, you know, after we finish coloring it. So first we're going to color, and I like to color skin first. We're going to use E000, E00. E21, E13, and E11. I just filled my markers, so I'm hoping I can get through this without any splashes on my card. So we'll see how this goes. But the first step that you're going to do, or that I like to do, is take my lightest tone, which is E000, and coat the entire area with alcohol. This just helps all of your other colors blend a little easier. Then I like to jump up to E13. And I start putting in shadows wherever they may be on the face. And in this case, they're going to be towards the edges of the face. And at the hairline. And now I can start working my way down the colors using flick to flick in and push that color towards the center of her face. And at this point I'm going to color in her neck a little bit there. And I'm using E21 to continue this process, just flicking in towards the center of her face. One thing I really like about Tilda is that, um, and I'm going to color a harder image, in my opinion anyway, a much more difficult image later this week, so she is the easier of the two, but her shadows on her face are very simple. So now you can go back in here with your lightest tone and kind of smooth this out. And then before this all dries, I'm going to take R20 and flick this in. And this is going to make her cheeks rosy. And if you don't do this while it's still wet, your cheeks are going to be more red. They're going to be more splotchy looking. And I personally, I'm not a big fan of that look. So I like it better when they are blended into the original face. So her face and neck are done. So now we're going to do her two arms and her two legs. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take our lightest tone. and cover them with alcohol. And again, the step is, um, a lot of people call this priming your paper. I think it makes a lot of sense. You're making it so that the other colors will move more easily when you are blending. And set that aside. Now I can go back with my E13, which is my darkest color. And wherever I think is going to be the darkest, I'm going to start flicking in some color to create that shadow. If you don't know where that is, don't be afraid to use your lighter tones so that you um, can kind of shadow map. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in my video later this week with the harder image. I'll show you a little bit of shadow mapping of how I figure it out. But she is pretty easy to color in that sense. And in my mind, the shadows are going to be along the edge. There's going to be one under her ankle, maybe a little bit on her toe. And now I'm using E11. Starting to flick that color into her leg. 
if this looks too dark to you, then you can skip, skip E13 and make E11 your dark. But what I find is that when it's all colored, all said and done, I like to have the skin tone a little bit darker. When I first started coloring, I feel like I was afraid of color and I put very little on the paper. And then when I look back at some of the stuff I colored years and years ago, I think they all look like vampires or like this very pale, pale, pale white color. And I think now they look more realistic or have a more natural skin tone because I'm not afraid to add some, some depth in their skin. And then I'm going to go back in. I'm skipping R20. I'm not going to put blush on her, her legs because well, that's weird. But there we go. So we're kind of blending that in. And we're kind of using a mix here of flicks and we're using some scrubbing. I think skin is one of the few places you can scrub a little bit. Obviously, if you scrub too much, then there's no point in shading at all. But I like skin to be smooth because if it looks blotchy, then it looks like you have a, you know, like a zits or pock marks or I don't know, something not natural, which is definitely not what we're going for. All right, the next thing I'm going to pull out in my stash here are some blues. Um, I might pull out B37 here. I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to start with B32, 34, and 37, and we might pull out B39. That's what I meant to say. And we're going to color her skirt. So even though this is the lightest, this is a little bit of that shadow mapping I was going to talk about, I'm going to kind of identify the places I think the skirt is going to be the darkest. And this kind of allows me to kind of visualize that this is where I'm thinking the shadows are on her skirt. And then to me that looks okay. So now I'm going to come in with my E37. And this, I'm kind of just going over it. Trying to keep my hand out of it. When you hold the pen straight up, I know it's hard for you to see, which is it's tough. So I'm pulling, trying to hold my back for, hand farther back on the pen. But, okay. A little bit right in there. And now I'm going to take my B34 and start extending those shadows or into the highlight. I kind of wish I let her hand, if you can see this here, let me <clears throat> use this pen. Do you see right here, as soon as I lift this off, I wish I had let the skin dry a little bit because I have a little bit of blue kind of stretching into the skin because that was wet. So the alcohol is naturally just blending together, but I think I can fix that, but I want to wait for that to dry. If I go in there now and start adding more alcohol, I'm just going to make the problem a lot worse. I'm going to let this dry a smidgen. I'm going to come back in and darken this up, but I feel like there's too much alcohol in that section of the paper. So let's just let that dry. While that's drying, let's take R56 and I'm going to shade in some wine. Of course, you can make it white wine. I'm choosing red because it has a pop of color and I like that. So I chose E04 for a highlight and R56 to add some depth. And I'm just going back in and darkening up the bottom of that glass a little bit more. All right, and let's work on our hair again to let this dry some more. So those detail-oriented people out there, um, you may notice that this is a little different than what you just saw in the last clip. I colored this whole entire thing and filmed it and what I realized is that when I was coloring her hair, my hand was in the way and you couldn't really see. So what I did was I stamped this again, I colored it up to the point of coloring her hair, and I'm going to try coloring this again, but this time I'm going to try to keep my hand out of it so you can see the process. So I think I'm going to use these four markers. If I need to, I'll grab another color to add to it. 
but we're gonna try to, to use these four. I'm gonna start with E35. Now, if you, I, I color hair a little differently. Um, first off, hair's not supposed to be blended. You want it to look natural, so you should see lines and streaks in it. And what I'm gonna show you up here is that when I normally color hair, I hold my pen really close to the nib and I often hold it almost vertically and I'm doing these little marks here like little flicks to get um, a hair like look or strands of hair like look. I'm going to try to hold my marker, um, I still need to hold it up kind of perpendicular but I'm going to hold it farther back so you can see the image and, and where I'm putting these. So hopefully this is an experiment and feels odd to me but we're going to try because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. But I'm adding in tiny little flicks of E35. Along the edge in the places I think the hair is the darkest. And these are just itty bitty little things. This is not supposed to be a big deal. Now, if this looks tedious to you and you're like, oh my God, this is like torture, no big deal. Color your hair like you could color the skirt, the shirt, and it will look 100% a-okay fine. This is just one possible way to approach her hair. And I'm gonna, she has a little brett in her hair, and I'm just gonna fill in the little centerpiece of the brett with E35 just so it's hair colored. All right, I might come in and add a few more, but I'm gonna leave that as is. And now I'm gonna go to E31, and I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm gonna try to hold it farther back so you can see what's going on. Now here I usually go through all the markers at least twice. This feels really weird, you guys, coloring like this. Hopefully you can see. Last time all you saw was this was the top of my hand. So um, I, I just didn't feel good about, about publishing that. So hopefully this is better. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with E30. This is my lightest. And I'm going to start filling in these areas. And now this time I am using a little bit more of the side of the marker. Now I'm not trying to blend the colors together. I'm just kind of filling in the areas that are white because I don't know. To me it looks unnatural to have white spaces in your hair when you're coloring it. Some people leave that in the, as a highlight. And that's fine. It's personal preference. It's just not my, my style. Alright, so I think we have a base down of... E30 and I'm gonna to go to E37 which I, I haven't done anything yet and now I'm gonna come in and add in the darkest of the dark so this should be the color you use the least of and trying very hard to just do teeny teeny little flicks into our hair This is the color, in my opinion, that gives the hair the most shape and kind of helps you understand, oh, this piece is ahead of, you know, in front of this piece or this piece is behind this piece. And it gives her hairstyle the shape that you're going for. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit up in here in her bun. Pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to jump down to E35 and I'm just going to continue with that process. And I'm just adding in little pieces of, of hair here and there. Trying not to lose all of my highlight. I kind of wanted this to look like a, it's going to be a little darker than I wanted, but that's okay. I'm more concerned with can I get the 
the coloring done and you can see it done the exact shade of her hair. All right, E31. Adding a little bit more of this, trying to make it a little more natural brown, filling in some of those highlights, only leaving a little bit of that E30 left to show through. But I still want there to be texture in her hair, so try not to get rid of all of that. And I think that looks pretty good. I am going to go back up to my E35. There's a couple areas here, and hopefully I'm not getting in the way, that I want to just add little bits more of dark. Because I just think it looks a little unnatural the way it had it. So I'm just looking at my strokes and going, does that make sense? And I'm adding in a, a little bit, you know, some of them I'm lengthening a little bit. Some I'm filling in where I have a little bit too much highlight. But overall, I'm, I'm liking the texture that is created in this and how this is looking. Just filling in a little bit. I want that bun to look behind this, um, you know, the top of her head. So I wanted that to be a little darker. Just filling that in. All right, I'm content with that. So I'm gonna call her hair done. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna take my B37 and I'm going to color in this brett up here. And I missed a little piece of the hair in there. So I'm just gonna go back with E35 and fill that in so it looks like a barrette. And I think I'm done with my browns. And now what I'm going to do is take my C2 and C0 for her shirt. And I'm going to put C2 in the areas where I think it's the darkest. So along the edge of the bottom, the back of her arm, and her armpit. Over here, there's a smidgen right there. And then I'm going to take my C0 and flick that out. Now I'm not covering the whole shirt. The shirt's white. I'm just adding in a shadow. So I'm only fading the C2 out into white. Now I chose my cool grays because the skirt's blue and I think the cool grays complement that well. Now I'm going to take my blender pen and I'm not I'm just kind of running it along the edges and it's just going to soften any harsh lines I have to make that look more natural and her shirt is done now you could call this done but in the beginning of this video I said I'm going to come back to the skirt and I didn't want to let you down so I did I went and I grabbed my B39 and I am going to come back and make this a little bit darker and I'm going to start in here now that this is dry because before we were having a little trouble with over alcohol edges Oversaturated paper would be the right way to say it. So I'm flicking in some of that B39 is a dark shadow. And it's just a very little bit. And now I'm going to go back down through my colors, my B37, and soften these edges up. Again, this was optional. I actually thought the skirt looked fine, but because we were talking about it, I, I only I did exactly what I had done already. I just went and copied it again and started where I had left off with a mistake. So we darkened that up a little bit. Oops, I just got a little blue where I didn't want it. I can fix that. So I'm going to take that CO marker. I went a little over where I wanted to, and I'm going to run that over that real light blue. And thankfully, that blue is pretty forgiving in it. It's already gone. All right, perfect. Okay, we are, we are all finished with coloring. But one of the things I want us to do is I wanted to show you how I created her leg hanging off the card. 
And this trimmer, you can use a ruler and a pencil. You could use your, um, you could just eyeball it if you wanted. I happen to have this paper trimmer that has a wire guide in it. So what I'm gonna do is place that wire guide so it lays right underneath her bum and her hand on my cardstock. So that's where the wire is going to sit. And then I'm gonna take my trimmer and the blade sits right at the intersection of this line and this line on the side. So if you have a similar trimmer, your blade should sit right underneath this mark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut almost all the way up to her leg. Then I'm gonna pick this up and from the other side, I'm gonna cut all the way over to her other leg. Then I can set my trimmer aside. And so I have this um, flap here and I have a flap here. Now I can come in with my scissors and continue to fussy cut her out. So I can cut all the way up to this leg and I'm gonna cut around the bottom. And I mean, like I said, there's a couple different ways you could do this, but this to me is the easiest. piece of all right and all of this cardstock now becomes trash or recyclable and then this is going to get matted on here so when we put glue on this you don't want to put glue on her leg or anything that hangs off so you're only going to apply glue to this piece of the cardstock then when we put this on I'm going to center it with the bottom Now I have a little extra here. I'm gonna take this over, actually I can do it right here. I'm just gonna put this on my trimmer and I'm gonna trim off that little extra black. I cut my pieces a little bit big because I would rather have extra than not enough. That's pretty good. So we'll trim that little piece off and now we have a mat for this and this little piece of you guys see that I'm like a little hanging chad here there we go cool all right so now we can you want to open your card up so you make sure you're gluing on the front of your card and we're gonna place the blue cardstock. And I have a little bit that needs to be trimmed off. I'll do that on my guillotine trimmer. I think it does a better job. But now this time you're gonna put a little glue on her little leg and onto your mat. And we can glue our panel down to the front of our card. And that is how I made the somewhat silly Tilden Drinking Wine card. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it kind of gives you some ideas of ways you can modify some of your images and kind of have a the illusion of her popping out of a panel or a window and give it a try. I'd love to see what you, you do if you try this. Um, I'd also love to know what you think of Tilda. Let's do like a little informal survey here. Do you love Tilda? Do you hate Tilda? Let's just gotta get a feeling or maybe you're one of the few indifferent. That would be kind of nice. Um, please leave me a comment, send me photos. I'd love to hear from you. We're all at home, so let's, let's share the love. And I will be back later this week with um, another coloring tutorial of a girl that's it's slightly harder to color. She has more details in her face and, and body that we'll have to add more shadows to. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.